Sandy Bridge. Probably one of the greatest leaps forward in gaming architectures that we've had, uh, I would say, in the last decade or so. Um, my friend brought her PC over today for me to take a look at. It is a 3970X, 6-core uh, HEDT Sandy Bridge on X79. And today we're going to be taking it apart, doing a little bit of a refresh on it installing a water cooler on it and then we're going to do some before and after benchmarks on it to see what it runs stock and what it runs now overclocked in 2020. All right for god's sakes people if your computer's not running right like come on maybe 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 take a blower or a duster to the computer first. The night has come, it's cold and losing my control Your light is gone, and lonely darkness fill my soul I wish that you could save me from my isolation It's way too complicated, let's stop this conversation This conversation We got no relation All right, now that I got this thing all back together and she's all cleaned up with a water cooler, let's do some before and after benchmarks.
Well, there you go, guys. The uh, the differences were pretty massive, I must say. Um, we're talking almost 50, 60 FPS in those eSport titles. Um, Overwatch, PUBG, and Warzone. You may think that the results don't make any sense. I mean, how are some of these games getting 50 to 60 FPS improvements when we only increase the core clock by 40? Not even 40. Uh, one thing you have to remember with these older architectures, especially Sandy Bridge, when you're increasing the core clock, the ring or uncore in the Haswell days, um, that is directly linked to the core speed on these ones. So even though we increase the core to 4.7, the ring is also running at 4.7. Once you increase the ring by that much, and then you also tighten the timings and increase your RAM, reduce your latency by X number, let's say in this case 30 nanoseconds, um, the games start to make a lot more sense. Games are very latency heavy. Um, which we know with Ryzen, the more latency you have, even though the clocks are running at 4.7, you just can't get those frames fast enough. So that's what's going on here. So, I mean, all we did today was lap the CPU and install a 240 millimeter AIO. And all of a sudden we went from a computer that could barely run Warzone better than a console to a PC that can now be competitive with a 240 hertz monitor. So that's that's huge. I mean, if, if you're still running these old X79 platforms, there's there's legit no reason to upgrade these things at all whatsoever. They still haul ass. Now, whether or not you should actually go out and buy one of these things now, uh, I'm not, may like maybe, you know, I, I just checked eBay and you can get a Xeon E1660 for 65 bucks, which is the uh, the Xeon equivalent of the um, 3970X. You just get the Xeon, it's better binned, and it's way cheaper. It's just that nobody knows about it. That's why they're all over eBay. Um, then you can get maybe a motherboard. If you can, if you can snag one for 100 bucks, I mean... Then maybe get some RAM for 40 bucks, those cheap little green PCB ones. And you're looking at a whole platform for for $200. I mean, how how can you possibly beat that? That's that's not even you get a whole platform for the price of a 10600K now, right? Um in terms of where it stacks up on the totem pole, uh I'm going to do some more benchmarking later with a 9900K, a 4790K, and uh, 3300X, so we'll be able to tell where it falls in the totem pole later on when I finish those benchmarks. But I mean, if if you can snag one of these things up for two hundred dollars, you're not you're not beating that price to performance whatsoever. E even in 2020, like it's like we're we're a decade later here, and these things are still. Come on, Intel. Well, that's it for today. Uh, hope you guys saw how how crazy Sandy Bridge can still be. Um, stay tuned for those future benchmarks. Uh, I'll have some time to do them later this week. And hopefully we can see where the 3970X stacks up later on. And if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. The hardest part about starting any new YouTube channel is just getting that first 1,000 subscribers so that Google thinks that I matter. Um, if you can subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. And like, share, etc. If you want to come play some games, hit me up on Twitch Tuesdays and Saturdays. And that's it. I'll see you guys later.